the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Comment on it. Stay blessed. We appreciate all those following us online from whatever nation you are connecting. The Lord bless you. The same power here will touch you in the name of Jesus. And for those outside, overflow one, two, three. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you in Jesus to pray. Those of, all, those of us who are coming here for the first time, you are welcome. This is Koinonia. You will not need to tell anyone you came here. Something will come upon your life. Hallelujah. Psalm 28. Blessed be the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplications. We are reading to verse 9. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength. And he is their saving, the saving refuge of his anointed. Verse 9. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. I want you to pray in one minute and say, I'm dropping every load I came here with. I will never go back with it. Lift your voice and insist. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Don't be careless tonight. There are families here. Who have brought all kinds of challenges lift your voice and pray send us help from zion tonight Lord, I'm not returning back. Not with that sickness again. Not with that captivity. I come tonight insisting. Not at this level of grace again. Not at this level of favor. Not with this oppression. I place a demand on your power. I place a demand on your anointing. hallelujah hallelujah sit down let me teach you something revelations 1 verse 1 this is not where i'm going but i just want to show you something you see brothers and sisters listen to me every time god gives a mandate please pay attention be sensitive Every time God gives a mandate, there are invisible forces. Listen carefully. No man is ever sent alone. You cannot do the work of God, the ministry of the spirit in the strength of the flesh. So every time God anoints a man or commissions an agenda, there are invisible forces. They don't come in response to prayer. Are we together? There are angels that come when we pray, but there are angels that follow graces. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They are not, they do not come in response to prayer. They don't come when the people believe. They come everywhere the anointing that backs that assignment goes. Are we together now? Ezekiel had a very strange vision and he saw a wheel and he saw that the shadow beams were following the direction of the wheels. Wherever it was going, it directed them. 
So I want you to know that there, there are two kinds of spiritual forces at work tonight. There are spiritual forces that come in response to the prayers of the saints. But there are spiritual forces that are positioned to make sure that every mandate given by God comes to pass. Are we together? Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Verse 1. He says, and he sent it and did what? And he signified it by his angel. There was an angel that was assigned with that revelation to make sure that not only John received it, but to make sure that revelation was guarded and delivered. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, the host of heaven is in this place. There are angelic activities that saw you when you were writing your request when you were taking the step of faith in the midst of the pain when you were dragging yourself and saying if i'm not healed this night i don't know what will happen there were angels sent to signify because you see you were coming because you believed that god will touch you are we together the angels are not at random then they start walking around hoping who are we attached to no god is not that disorganized right from your home an angel was signified yes, sir. this yes, person sir. coming with cancer who is the angel and he follows ah. if you decide to change your mind and go back the angel will not be represented here the angels that come on account of prayer will come but the ones mandated that you tap into the provision that the anointing is made for you, you may never get that experience. Listen, let me tell you something. And I say it with all humility. If you find yourself on this ground, half of your miracle has happened. Believe me. Do you know why? Listen, listen. This is not boastful statement. If you know the forces that stand between your house and this place, that stand between your mind what do you think happens when you change your mind and money disappears days to come and you feel weak and trouble comes it's an agitation so that you were able to take the step of faith and arrive some of you arrived since afternoon and you've been seated patiently god is not a joker and he signified it by his angel and he signified it there are forces that back men as i just mentioned forces i just started seeing lights when i see these things i know that they are angelic activities lights paros calabrianda katashibriata lights subren de kaposhia the bible says there are angels that excel in strength they excel in strength. They war warfare. They, 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 they were given an assignment from heaven. They are not just here waiting. No. They were sent. God said, make sure this woman does not go back with this pain. She didn't go to a herbalist. Make sure this sister does not go back with that devil. And he sent it. I'm giving us an orientation like this because you see many of us are very casual when we come into the presence of God sometimes we are not trained to discern atmospheres it is important for you to understand atmospheres don't create themselves mysteries create them so you may just be sitting and looking at a chair but there is a lot there is a programming you came and entered into are we together now yes there is a business that men do with god before just coming nobody is stupid enough to come and stand before thousands of people and hold a mic and talk nonsense it's suicidal there must be an agreement with god and god says go and it is on the strength of that that you can dare to stand and say oh grave where is your sting oh sickness where is your limitation are we together 
please i want you to know i'm i'm giving us a little orientation because i truly the the things i saw in my visions as i prayed god is going to rest on this place in a heavy way it's as if it's as if there is an agitation and i've been sensing this whenever i sense the burden of the spirit i know that in partnership with god's people god is tired of certain situations that must change but the the the, the thing is about us if we are willing to partner with him god can be willing but we can be careless and hope well if, if it happens that's all right let me just watch if my situation changes no problem if the new anointing comes to my life no problem if god opens up a new door no problem if the employment comes no problem but tonight is for people who insist and say there's no plan b god i've come tonight there is no plan b i'm not hoping for a job next month i've had other testimonies i don't know who you must talk to but thank god the man of god said there are angels they must walk this night too this is this is the kind of audacity this is the kind of insistence oh god we are 11 in our family nobody's rising are we cursed we love you we serve you no job no children no marriage no peace come on now you need to get angry there is an agitation that provokes the anointing are we together lord i didn't live a wayward life now there is a terminal disease that is about to destroy me i don't know where it came from i just found out that they said i have hiv or cancer insist i must leave you this night don't sit down and be hoping and saying well uh, if it doesn't no nobody who has an option receives a miracle you don't receive miracles with options it is if i perish i perish Let it not be that you wasted your transport to come and you are saying, okay, Lord, let's watch what happens. No, sir. Lord, I've heard that you can change the stories of men. I've watched you do it. Hallelujah. There is a connection. You see, what causes things to happen in the kingdom is the anointing of the holy spirit the power of god is the mysterious agency behind results whenever results happen in the physical the agency the force that makes results to happen is the power of god it's not just prayer listen carefully it's not just the words words are vehicles in those words are the force and the power the life-giving power of god but listen carefully there is a relationship that many believers do not understand between faith and the anointing many people have written books about faith and the anointing and the teaching that most people have received in the body of christ is that you can choose faith or you can choose the anointing there are two routes to choose from is a lie there's nowhere in the bible where that is taught I've read my Bible very well. This is an office that God has given me. I can tell you about the anointing. There is no place in the Bible where you can choose either between faith and the anointing. No, sir. They will always work. Faith in itself does not produce result. Faith connects you to the flow of the anointing. It is the anointing, the power of God that produces result. Why is faith important? Because that is the only way God designed for men to touch the anointing. The possibilities of God are only authorized to be manifested when there is faith. What is faith? Conviction. Conviction. And the action that is taken on the strength of that conviction. Very simple. Faith is conviction. The most important aspect of faith is conviction accumulating scriptures is not conviction that you are familiar with scriptures does not mean conviction conviction is of the heart it is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit where faith is grounded in the spirit of a man is called conviction are we together listen to me 
the reason why many believers do not see the outstretched arm of God is because there is truly no faith. If the problem is not anointing, it is faith. Because many believers are not Bible-believing believers. Many believers do not study the word of God. You see, the system of the miraculous is such that you must understand that God is not a herbalist. The basis of the introduction of his power to your life is access to his will access to his will that's the starting point of faith it matters to god that you are convinced not only that he wants to touch you or that he is able to touch you but that he's willing to touch you the bible is full of god's willingness but until you find out you're not going to believe nothing you believe a report you believe an information you believe a truth someone must propose something to you he said whose report will you believe the starting point is your access to a truth not just a random access to scripture oh by his stripes i'm healed oh i'm the head and not the tail oh i'm the righteousness of god that's just stories brothers and sisters that's not conviction an accumulation of scriptures is not conviction conviction is a product of meditation that you take the word of god and say lord there has to be a way out now let me tell you while you are meditating your situation has not yet changed it is the meditation that will change it you will not meditate when it changes that you sit down and you open your bible and you say we are 12 in our family and every door has closed door of favor closed door of everything and you find a scripture and you stay with the holy ghost while you are studying that scripture you are clueless on what to do don't worry faith is rising in your spirit and all of a sudden the word of god is energized in your spirit the holy ghost opening you up he brings you to a point where you are convinced such that even if you don't receive the result yourself you can no longer say it's a lie you will just admit that this thing has not worked for me but to disbelieve that this is god's will is impossible that's conviction you get to a point where the truth the, your certainty about that truth is no longer about your result again that you look at it and say male and female he created them if i never give birth to a child from my womb i will never disbelieve the fact that god gives children that's conviction where you are not your situation is too small to make you change this is who god is this is what he has said conviction most times we come to god we think we have faith but the truth of the matter is that we just come and hope okay lord i just hope let the man of god prophesy to me i i hope will he lay hands on me will i be healed i don't know what will happen but lord i hope no no the bible is full of god's manifesto so that you will believe him brothers and sisters if you were god will you gather a whole family like this and then tell them i'm joking there's something people do april fool you know it you know how angry you are when they do a prayer full for you because of the seriousness that is committed in the information and then the person tells you i was joking no sir no sir no sir god cannot call a solemn assembly like this to come and waste your time and then to say that he's going to give you a job now let me tell you there is every possibility you will go back and that job will not happen and it's not god's fault god is saying if my power does not come your direction something is stopping it faith faith blind Bartimaeus would not shout if he did not believe Jesus would heal him he heard that this man could heal and although he was blind he said thou son of David he never called him Jesus that's a revelation that's a revelation all those who knew Jesus never called him Jesus they called him by certain names Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Son of David, have mercy upon me. Are we together now? 
So once you are here seated, you didn't come for church. You are the one who knows the fire you left to come here. Let me tell you how to respond and receive. Number one, you have to be convinced that God is able and willing to step in. Step in. Now you may say, man of God, you don't know how many men of God have prayed for me. Let me teach you something about miracles. There is, there is a dimension of the grace of God you only experience when you find a man that is sent to you. Listen very carefully. There were many widows in Zarephath. And I'm sure those widows called on the God they knew, but to none was Elijah sent. The Bible never said the widows were not taken care of. Elijah was not the only prophet. So other systems were designed by God, but as far as the widow of Zarephath is concerned, one of the greatest testimony that can happen to a man is to discern the anointing that can solve your problem. That a man is anointed does not mean he solves every problem. No, sir. No, sir. There were people, Jesus was on earth, he did not touch them. It was when the apostles received the Holy Ghost, they came back and met those people and the, the apostles touched them. Paul, who was Saul, was on earth, but the earthly ministry of Jesus did not affect him. It was till Jesus went to heaven and then he had several encounters and came. So that a man is anointed, it will be arrogant to just guarantee and imagine that everybody will be touched by your anointing. It's not true. These are very deep spiritual mysteries. Jesus said, John 17, listen to what he said. He said, all that you have given me. That means there were some that were not given. They were given to his salvation, but not his earthly ministry. They were given to be benefactors of his salvation as the Lamb of God. But they were not given to be partakers of his earthly ministry. All that you have given me, listen. He was giving God a report. He says, all that you have given me, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. And it's not because I was careless. He was lost so that scriptures might be fulfilled. People of God, I want you to believe God and trust God tonight. If you carry your problem and come and carry your anger and annoyance, anger does not give miracles. Oh, my stupid husband, my stupid wife. No, you are going to come with your heart open and say, Lord, I know, I know it is within your power. And you, you, you are receptive. Receptive to prophecies. Receptive to instructions. Receptive to the move of God. That when his power comes close to you, you know that, Lord, this is it. I've gotten my miracle. Testifying is not magic. You program your spirit to be a benefactor. The anointing of the spirit can come and pass a place and you can stand as though it never located you. Is that true? But there is a way you can position your spirit. It's called faith. First, your conviction. A, a sense of certainty that God will touch me. The program was tailor-made. I was talking with the protocol while we were coming and I was telling him that from start to finish of our programs, especially the miracle service, everything is designed to make sure that your miracle does not escape you. From the opening prayer to everything, to the nature of the prayers, the miracles, then prayer requests, then everything. And then still after the service, I stand to see people. It's, it's a design to make sure that everybody receives. Don't let the devil mock God in your life. You are going to insist and say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe you. Now, let me tell you something with Satan. Because Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh. He knows that the way he destroys your faith is to supply informations around your life that are very obvious. Is that true? Right now, you are sitting down. Then he uses the pain. And he says, tell me, man or woman of faith, is it no pain you are feeling now? And then you are tempted to say, but it's true. Tell me, man or woman of God, is it not your rent issue you left at home? 
is a landlord not waiting for you at home when you hear that kind of thing it just agitates you but people of faith say uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. i choose to believe it is in the believing the miracle will come i'm not ready to be distracted now it is in the believing that the miracle will come every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down Tonight in this place, there are people who are afflicted by all kinds of diseases. Some of you have had medical reports. Some of you have spent money in the hospital and it has become clear. Some of you were even recommended by doctors. We thank God for the caliber of doctors we're having now. They are spiritual people. Once they try once, twice, it's them who will advise you and say, we will not stop you. But Mr. Man, find a man of God quick. Are we together now? There are people here sick with all kinds of oppression. Benihim calls sickness death, limited death. He calls sickness limited death. That means if you are sick, it's like a part of you has already died. And it's true. There are people here with all kinds of delays in need of major breakthroughs. Not everyone here is sick. But there are people in need of all kinds of breakthroughs. There are people here, and many people do not know that the causes of their challenges are oppressions, demonic oppressions, demonic oppressions, activities of spiritual forces in the lives of people, programming repeated cycles of tragedy programming repeated cycles of tragedy there are people tonight in need of supernatural solutions solutions that only God can give job issues promotion issues health issues all kinds of issues it's not called a healing service it's called a miracle service a miracle service is an atmosphere where the multifaceted possibilities of God are allowed unrestrained. It's like a feast. If you are sick, then there is a dimension of him that can address that. If you are not sick but oppressed of the devil, there is a dimension of him. Now, it's important for us to understand how God answers prayers. Because many of us have been praying. We have prayed here over our issues. There are many of us, what you need tonight is prayers and wisdom. That is the answer that you need. Wisdom. You may not be sick, but a lot of your decisions may not be accurate. And you will need a supply of wisdom or higher wisdom. Number two, there are people tonight the miracle you need is grace for obedience grace for obedience grace for obedience that spiritual inertia that reluctance to rise up responding to your conviction is what has kept many of us where we are there are people tonight your prayers will be answered to deliverance there is no discussion. You don't need counseling. You need those spirits out of your life. And the legal basis, not just the spirits out of your life, but the legal authorization that keeps them in your life, keeps them in your family. There are people tonight, the answer to your prayer is healing for your body, healing for your soul. Do you know, years ago, I didn't pay so much attention to what people call emotional healing. I felt it was very feminine and for lazy people. 
most I, I felt any serious person needed physical healing or spiritual healing if you needed emotional healing you needed orientation too but it's not true um, emotional healing can be more painful than physical healing are we together the Bible says a broken spirit can dry the bones where the life of a man is carved out there are people in need of all kinds of healing there are people tonight, the answer to your prayer is repentance and forgiveness. That's how God will answer you. You need to forgive and you also need to repent. That's your miracle service tonight. There are people tonight, the answer to your prayer is prophecy. You need a prophetic word. You need a direct prophetic word that addresses your issues no long story no discussion alongside the creative power that flows through prophecy pay attention there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is an impartation of favor it's very clear that if favor came into your life you would not be where you are favor there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is a direct impartation, greater fire, greater unction, greater activation of the gifts of the spirit, greater activation of, of a higher capacity for spiritual things. There are people tonight, your own miracle service it's an introduction of the mercy of God over your life and situation. Everybody here will receive tonight through one or more of these means. A supply of wisdom, grace for obedience, deliverance from spirits, healing, repentance, forgiveness, prophecy, favor impartation your assignment is to be sensitive to when your word comes you see that like the lady who was already shouting while the meeting started something is already happening to her you see god is already doing his business with her for someone in the overflow you may be in maybe overflow three overflow three the fence is covered and they almost cannot see me directly except through the screen doesn't matter the only thing you benefit standing close to a man of God is convenience in the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter whether you are here whether you are outside whether you are online whether you are in any nation doesn't matter the time zone the most important thing is when your faith can connect to the anointing then a supply of the power of God comes your direction tonight brothers and sisters I present to you a God who is almighty tonight I present to you a king that can heal that can change situations the Bible says where the word of a king is there is power I present to you one who is not limited by our situations I present to you one who is loving enough to respond to you I present to you one who loves you enough to change your life i present to you one who can give you value for your time spent in his presence god is not a herbalist god is not a prophet he walked on the earth and manifested those things but he's god almighty i want your heart to be open tonight especially if you're here for the first time you may have come gone through all the rigors of the inconvenience to position yourself somewhere you must open up your heart to receive we have prayed we've partnered with God and God is ready to deliver that which is your portion in full in full in full not part of it remember the negotiation that Pharaoh wanted he wanted to broker a negotiation and said let your wives go leave your kids behind and, and Moses said no way that's not what God told me everything must go plus animals so you're going to insist tonight that even if it's your hair falling, God must come in and touch it. 
Don't say it does not matter. Why believe God in one area and not believe in another? Regardless of the area, it is still the power of God that will solve it. Don't trust God to heal your body and then not change your financial situation. No. Don't trust God to step in and deliver you from oppression and then you go back sick again. Do you believe tonight that the Lord is going to step in and change your life? Truly speaking, let me tell you this. God has granted me the privilege to walk in dimensions of his anointing. It still marvels me after many years of working in the anointing how the anointing works. It's still a marvel to me at how when the power of God truly locates someone how his life changes overnight. Overnight. Except it's not the power of God that meets you. You won't know it will change. All of a sudden you will see doors open. My elder sister shared with me a testimony today. She probably might be following online. Something that God did in her life. And I'm not a very emotional person. But I was almost fighting tears. I says God already. First of October. A strange. These are, the, these, are the, these are the kinds of miracles. Listen. These are the kinds of miracles that when you hear. If only one of it happens per year. You are happy major miracles that can shift your life i said lord thank you because my family members are also partaking because they have to believe too that they are my family members does not mean they will believe automatically no the brothers of jesus kept watching him and he said don't be watching no release your faith some of you here are sitting you have cried in the secret you have cried in the open let this be your last cry Are we together? Only God knows the pain that some of you are seated here with. The level of pain you are, you are seated. That, see, this is why we fast and pray and prepare. Because we will be wicked to allow people come. Some of you started your journey since last week. You have come to come, spend time, spend resources. No, this is not a cinema hall. This is not a place of games. Some of you have carried sick people. Some of you have carried sick bodies. There is a God that can reward. There is a God that can reward. Please hear me. I may not claim I know everything about God. But I know this God enough to know he's mighty. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Listen, listen. Let me teach you something about the anointing. The anointing introduces possibilities in your life. These are things that were not there. If it's not there, you can't say it's there. It's a lie. Tonight, don't tell lies. There are things that are not in your life but should be there. The agency that will bring it is the anointing. There is favor that should be in your life but it's not in your life. If it's not there, everybody will know. When it comes, we will also know. There were things that were not in my life years ago. When it came, I knew to the degree that brought it. Listen, tonight is the ministry of the spirit. I told you it's the anointing that is responsible for the result. It is the, the it is a how shall these things be? What is the dynamics? He said the power of the highest. That's how it happens. It has never changed. It is always an encounter with the anointing. Your, the job of your faith is to connect you to the anointing. It is never faith that moves God. No. Your faith connects you to the power of God. Tonight I came with an anointing. There is enough grace. There is enough anointing. I tell you this. 
There is enough anointing if you will believe. There is enough anointing. Your situation is not the first. Your situation is, the, is not the first. Your family situation is not the greatest. There is nothing new under the sun. God's ability is God's ability. He's working in me. He's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. solution to your problem is in the anointing seek an encounter with it when the anointing comes to you that's the answer that's the answer listen listen when the anointing comes your direction that's your answer that's God answering your prayer I'm not talking about falling down I'm talking about an encounter the answer is in the anointing your faith only connects you to the anointing Your life can change in a moment your life can change in a moment God is a prayer answering God he answers prayers by releasing his power he sends his power through his word in the direction where it is needed and received needed and received
Please lift your hands. The prayer answering God. The prayer answering God. There is a God that answers prayers. Koinonia, he answers prayers with his power. He answers prayers with the anointing. The anointing is answered prayer. The anointing is answered prayer. The anointing kato soto kata is answered prayers. Barakoto shote kete lekata. The anointing is answered prayer. It is by the anointing. There is no other way. It is by the anointing. Please lift your hands. The Lord is going to do a very quick work tonight. I'm hearing people crying in the spirit. And the Holy Ghost is telling me these are those who have been delayed. Delayed by the power of darkness. I'm about to release the anointing upon people experiencing delay. Bring them out. I stretch my hands. Delay. You come on that judgment. You come on that judgment. Delay. Delay. I stretch my hands. All the overflows online. Anyone here. Any family. Under the spirit of delay. Bring them out. Sakoto Shabariata. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. The fire of God. Breaking the chains of delay. 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 Bring them out. Wani Kamadakai Papu Wani Kamadakai Delay over, over forever. There is an anointing. I told you the anointing is the answer to the prayers. There is an anointing. I'm seeing in this main bowl 16 people. I'm seeing a number 16. Where are they? I stretch my hands. That sword of the spirit breaking delay. There are families with a covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. Breaking now. Breaking now. Breaking now. The covenant of delay. Shakatatata. Reketo Kosotoba. The covenant of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow three. Please look at me on the screen. You don't need to bring them here. It's too long a distance. Those inside that building. Just look at me on the screen because I'm seeing angels moving at overflow three and I want to pray for you overflow three right now in the name of Jesus right where you are in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 24 24 people right at overflow three the Lord is breaking delay breaking delay from them breaking delay right now breaking delay hallelujah there are still people listen i want you to believe in what god is doing i want you to have a testimony without an encounter with his power it will just be a religious service i promise you and you will go back it is the power of god the power of god is what draws the line hallelujah delay delay God is not yet done 
Where is that family, oh Lord, that nobody has moved forward? I'm seeing delay. Don't worry, God is coming in. The anointing of the Spirit is looking for a family. There is a family. There is a family. There is a family. Shakatosete. Shabrata skatapareketa. They are here. There is a family. Jesus. Shokos ketetosia. Help this woman. Sheketos keleketa yata tosikata. There is a family. This is not just an individual thing. There is a family. The power of God is searching for a family that the devil has kept, kept, kept so that they will not rise. Hallelujah. We are going to be fast tonight. There are many things to do. I want you to be sensitive. The Lord is showing me a vision now. And I'm seeing a grave. I'm seeing something that looks like a black leather. Inside that grave. And I'm seeing an angel of the Lord pull it out. And the Lord is saying this was done against a family. Lord where is that family? Right now I stretch my hands. Shekatos kata. Whoever programmed the earth to fight any family, tonight is a night of resurrection. Soketos Kariatata Parotos Sotokos Eleketokos Priakatas Kotariatatosia. I decree and declare let it come out now let it come out the breakthrough of that family the healing of that family the miracle of that family I release it now hallelujah hallelujah I'm standing here and I'm looking at this stage one two three four five six seven i'm counting seven stones and the lord is saying these are tight destinies this is the whole destiny of a family seven of them but may the sword of the god i serve in the name of jesus any family tied down by witchcraft any family tied down by ordinances i decree and declare by the blood of jesus liberty tonight liberty tonight hallelujah I'm seeing a family and there are four ladies and all the four ladies have a growth either a breast lump or something in their body four ladies all of them have it in the name of Jesus Christ wherever this family is regardless of what what overflow I stretch my hands now in the name of Jesus Christ that family does not need healing that family needs deliverance. I command deliverance right now. Shakato skata. Lekata koto soto priyata. I command deliverance for that family now. I command deliverance now. When I was praying, I saw at least eight women that were barren no child doesn't matter what years some of them connected to families and the lord told me he was going to open the wombs of every single one of them every single one of them every single one of them please lift your hands i want to pray now i believe in deliverance I really do.
this mama there's serious witchcraft in your family as i'm praying for you now i'm seeing a rope a rope i'm seeing a rope and the lord is saying that i should set this mama free i'm just being fast because i want us to conserve time hallelujah listen do you know why we do not minister deliverance just as a religious thing no it is a way of separating people and the influences that tie them down that's what i want to do now i want to pray listen many of you inside many of you outside are here now because of spirits you may not believe it you may not agree but it's true they are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through but i want to pray for you now your own is to believe just do what i'm asking you to do we have already prayed if those spirits do not clear out of your life there is no breakthrough you you would have come to waste your time let me tell you the truth it is when those forces leave your life families here spirits have sat on the destinies of families do your worst go to school and come back and meet us get a job and see come back and meet us marry and come back and meet us are we together it's time for them to go lift your hands everyone i want to pray for you now i'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you are we together now i'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself you can do well to help please you can help at least manage the ushers will come for it because this prayer i'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people i see a lot of wild spirits wicked ancient spirits all shapes and all sizes they must go now just one instruction i just want you to shout when i ask you the name of jesus once and at the top of your voice now listen don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you it doesn't mean you are possessed no that's a different thing altogether some of you as you are here you are representing your family nothing may be wrong with you as a person but because of your family are you ready now lift your hands father in the name of jesus you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of jesus at the sound of my voice may your voice be my voice may your grace be my voice i send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the holy ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational familiar spirits i command you now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now
Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm seeing a number of ladies. There are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams. In the name of Jesus, where are those ladies? Fire is looking for them now. Shakoto Soto Ketiata. Ekelatos Kopriata. I separate you from those spirits. I separate you from those covenants. I separate you from those ordinances. Any man, any woman, any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of Jesus, I command by the Spirit a severance between you and them. Hallelujah. Sir, this Baba, can I talk to you, sir? Please come. God is about to change your story forever. I don't know you, sir, but I want to pray for you. Stand up, please stand up, sir. I'm looking at you in a vision and I'm seeing you are not alone. You came with some people, your children, one, one child, your son, eh? Only you? No, there's a son. He's here. Where is he? Come, come and stand. Daddy, I want to pray for you that this life of hardship, God wants, please stand up, please stand up. You don't have to kneel down, sir. This is your dad. I want to pray for you. You came believing. Eh? August, is it Augustus? I'm hearing the name Augustus. Augustus. Is it Augustus? Is it Augustus, Augustine, or something? Augustus. Please, if that's your name, let me just talk to you quickly. I want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much. We want to pray for the sick. I want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that... My sister, come. This lady, this one, not you. You are not a woman, my brother. This, come. Lift your hands. Shout over. Forever in the name of Jesus Christ for you and your family. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, what is about to happen to you there is a reason why I ask you to come because the Lord showed me that there was a son and I want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind. You believe it, sir? Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. It's over right now. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare that it's over. In the name of Jesus. Over forever. Sir, hold my hands. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go and prosper. Gabriel, who is Gabriel? Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time. Gabriel, Gabriel. Is he Gabriel? What's your name? Huh? Augustine, come. You are Gabriel. Why is he here? Augustine. I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. My sister. Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. Two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel. Too. You too. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's first October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there, right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire coming on you. 
and the Lord is, I should tell you, he's taking something away from your stomach. That's what is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that thing to go now. My brother, there is oppression. There's a spirit that you need to be delivered from. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Out now of his life and his family. Help two of them. God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but it doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Ye two. Ye two. What is ye two? I'm seeing Y E. Is it Y E T U or ye two or ye two? Something like that. Ye two. Something that has to do with ye two. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Ye two. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Yetu. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Yetu? You can guess Gabriel, you can guess Mary. But Yetu, I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a curtain. And leave her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is of the devil and I release your wife right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Your miracle has come. Your miracle has come. You love Jesus, my friend, look at me. You love Jesus, I want to pray for you. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Why is she here? Your dad. There is a copper that I want to pray for. There is a copper. Something is coming on you, my dear. Let me pray for you. Don't worry. If, if, I, if all I do, I, I just lay my hands on you. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Please, why are you here? You are Gabriel? Gabriel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for this guy. God is giving you favor. Great favor. Great favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's bad luck in your life and your family. But it's going now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's going. That's why you're here. Gabriel. Come. Aleku. Is there? This is like an idol. Oleku or Aleku. Eh? Aleku. Aleku. Who is that? Eh? Hold on. Where are you from? Aleku. This is something that has to do with a tree. Is there something like that? He said, What? Why are they coming out? What is why are you? They named somebody after the idol. And the Lord is saying, Who, who is the person? Whose name? This is it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State. But the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying this is like somebody's name. Ale, Ale Kuos, Ale something like that. Ale Ku or so. Who is this? Huh? What's that? Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, they are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. Is that true? They called that name three times. One, two, three. That idol. Is that true? Yes. Sir. From that day when you woke up, your life was never the same again. Is that true? Give her the mic now. Let her talk. Yes. Sir. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Hold my hands. If you are from Benway here, hold my hands. Anything, any programming that has been done with any God, you will be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata. Out of their lives now. Out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a medical university. I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and nobody. There's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, you have, do you know what they call the cause of hardship? You are not a lazy man, but there is hardship in your life. And the Lord is asking me to help you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for this, our daddy let there be a miracle right now in his life i command this yoke of hardship to go let it go forever in the name of jesus let it go forever jumai 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 is that your name uh well i'll pray for you but this is not the person i'm seeing jumai I'll pray for you. Your family is oppressed. There is a spirit that must go now. Bring her. I've not even started praying. Bring her. There is a, a, a wicked spirit that I see in this family. A very wicked spirit that I see in this family. This is something that is older than, older than old. This is hundreds of years old. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I use you as a point of contact. I command that spirit, you must go now. Hallelujah. Please, just allow me. This is, Juma, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, right now in the name of jesus there is disfavor in your life anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you i hold your hands and i release you right now in jesus name i want to pray in a hurry there is a family all the men it doesn't matter whether you are hard working whether you go to school or not but the lord is asking me to pray for that family right now lord where are they I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside, outside, under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now I release the power of God to that family right now 
I speak to the men in that family arise now arise now arise now arise now arise now help that woman arise now arise now the men in that family arise now arise now in the name of Jesus there's somebody here you lost your job in the month of March March you lost your job please where is that person you were working but in the month of March I want us to hurry up I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time the month of March I don't know if you are except if he's a person his family overflow tree then they can just locate him you lost your job there's something you lost your job in the month of March where is that person Please quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was a banker. I was a banker. You were a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened? Yes, sir. And they dismissed you? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you will get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where have you been praying for? Ah, sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. Bank same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me I know many of you may not why is he here sir come well stand up sir you were outside yes, overflow three overflow three yes you sir. lost your job where were you working i'm working in hospital which hospital? an accountant which hospital Tukutuku medical centers so that you see we don't ask this question because we are prying into your privacy. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing, because there are still people with all these things they see, they still believe that maybe someone is playing games. At least this one is not, you are watching it now. Which hospital, sir? Tukutuku Medical Center, Zaria. At uh, Tukutuku. Okay, where are you working now? I'm just, I'm managing with one private school. What do you want God to do for you? Just get back to the job. Back to that place? No, 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 no. Another job, sir. Another job? Yes. Do you believe if I pray for you, God will give you a job? I believe that. Do you know why I'm prophesying to you in the open? So that you will testify in the open too. What's your name, sir? I'm Paul. Paul? Yes, sir. God will give you a job, eh? Amen. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. Listen. So when it has to do things there, we don't legislate. We make petitions. But the act has he given to the sons of men. I give you a job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. He will go and return with it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, how many of us are trusting God for healing miracles? Or came with loved ones that are really sick? Okay, we have a lot to do. So what will happen is, we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick. And then after that, I'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer. Will that be okay? Now, but while we're doing that, please, no laziness. There will be prayer points. Are we together? There will be prayer points. Once the prayer point comes, pray. Because in that prayer point, you will receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. But don't sit down yet. I'm, I'm not walking around, but I just want to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord directing me to someone. There is, there is something that we must settle here. 
I'm seeing an anointing going around this place. I'm seeing an anointing going around this area. There is oppression over someone's destiny. That's the lady in the name of Jesus. I command that devil to go now. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? Kina de chuo, chuo kafa. To mama mu fara do akije ki jirani agabako. Zan miki adu. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let it be over now. That oppression. Let it be over by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming to. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. In the name of Jesus. I saw light moving across here. And God wants to visit a family right now. Three of them. One, two, three. Where are they? Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the visitation come now. No hiding. The Lord must touch them. That's why you came. The Lord must touch you. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts. That's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds, out, lifting hands, bowing hearts. That's all we come to do. In your name. That girl, look at me. Shout Jesus. Something is tying you. Let it lose you now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it be over now. Hallelujah. Now please, for those of you coming here for the first time, we take our time. We, you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time. Our time is very limited. Praise the Lord. Now this is what we are going to do. Um, while I give you the prayer request, please listen carefully. Those, please listen carefully. I want to pray particularly, particularly, no matter what overflow you are in, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, don't come now but when it's time to come i want you to come i want to pray for you by myself but any other issue those inside i want you to come stand here and then parts of overflow two maybe half of overflow two can join them now overflow one please you go to your projector stand overflow two and those spilling over at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three if God grants grace and there's time, I'll just run and come and visit you briefly just to let you know we're together. Overflow 3, move to your projector stand. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray very quickly. Please, if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you, don't worry. We have to pray quickly so that I'll focus and do other things. I want everybody to receive. Will that be fine? But those who are trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you're in overflow, one, two, three, wherever, I like you to please come those online doesn't matter any nation those following us online doesn't matter your nation you're trusting God for a miracle I want you to connect right now by faith hallelujah so we're going to do three things at the same time number one you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers number two you're going to be praying the prayers that I'll give you while preparing our faith and then number three will come out is that all right praise the Lord so let's do that very quickly very quickly please you are trusting God or you came with a sick person now is your time to come out please quickly 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 Jesus we bless you Pardon you reign on casting crowds lifting hands bowing 
what we've come to do Casting rods We are lifting hands Bowing hearts To what we've come to do It's in your name In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people, uh, our miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, we'll coordinate. We'll make it very fast. Ushers, please be collecting the prayer requests. If your loved ones are yet to send their own, send them a text quickly. And she can join the queue. Just keep them somewhere. I'm going to lay my hands on them. Praise the Lord. How many overflows do we have? There's an extra overflow I see by the road. It has spilled over. Maybe overflow four. You can, uh, let's see. We have to be fast. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, Pastor Jimmy will be at the overflow outside here. Pastor Alpha, you'll be at the overflow here. Benga, you would go to overflow three. Um, is there someone outside here? Who is outside here? Pastor Alpha is outside. Um, promise. Promise you will be here with Pastor Alpha. And then um, Pastor Femi, you'll be with um, you'll be with Benga right there at the overflow. Inside here, I don't know how many people are left. And, by God's grace, God will grant us grace and we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister. Okay, Kenny. Kenny, join join um, a Jimmy. You join a Jimmy there. I think that's that's all right so far. Let's let's just trust God for grace. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus Christ that for everyone we are praying for, it doesn't matter who lays hands on them, let there be miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be miracles. The devil is a liar. Let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your stomach, my dear. I want to remove something from your body now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. That devilish spirit. Father, let there be miracles. In Jesus' name. Please, let's go very quickly. We we'll need more hands. I don't know if we we'll still have people. I know they may. Aaron, what if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in overflow three with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please worship team. You're going to give us, we're going to pray one prayer first. I'd like you to decree and declare and say, Father, I prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we give you all the praise. The one only you know how to do Come and change my story Give me a testimony The one only you know how to do Can I hear you say the one only you know The one only you know how to do Can you lift up a voice and say what only you know, do what only you know how to do. Hey, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change my story. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know. Do what only you know how to do. Somebody say, do what only you know how to do. Do what only you know. Do what only you know how to do. Do what only you know. 
trust is in you. Hey, the ancient of days. My trust is in you. Hey, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. Hey, I put them on you. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that tonight is my night of testimony. Lift your voice and begin to pray over your request. Lift your voice and begin to declare. Prophesy. Tonight is my night of testimony. Shaka toko to prekete kata. Shaka paskata prekete kosh. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Pray, lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, we declare. Make sure you are praying. Lord, I decree and declare. I will not write this twice. I will not write this twice. Lord, we decree and declare. Miracles. Miracles. Are you praying? Miracles. Visit families. There are still more that should come quickly. A poco to poco to se que te va a dar a mano. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Adon, you mighty on your own, mighty in this place, mighty, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here, I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
listen let me tell you there are things written here that except the writer if you read it you won't even believe that it can happen but i pray the god who has the all-seeing eye that can see every request a representation of every man's pain here i call on that god answer by fire answer by fire father there are issues here that are impossible with men some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i prophesy let there be strange miracles strange miracles now for all those connecting from whatever nation in the name of jesus we agree with you here the same fire that is on this altar through the internet to your various localities you receive the same testimony in the name of jesus every human agent that must partner with god for this request to be granted we force them from their hiding places to appear now in the name of jesus christ whoever must die for this request to be answered in the name of jesus the ground opens and swallows them whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted we seize their peace and their sleep now hear me any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify may god answer their prayers this night The Lord is opening my eyes. I know they are still ministering outside. Let's be patient. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing these trees. It's like a representation of families. Hold on please. I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families. And I'm looking at it. I've never seen a tree bringing out blood, human blood. But in this vision, I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing. Hold on. Over people. is for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity. Clarity. God is answering questions now. By the anointing. If that fire comes on you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity. Clarity. All the overflows. Clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now.
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing particularly overflow one. An anointing for divine recovery. Divine recovery. Let me tell you something. Whatever leaves you can come back to your life. Are you hearing now? There are people who have lost things. I'm about to call it into your life now. And as that anointing comes on you, just know that it's your time of recovery. Lord, where are they? Where are those who have lost things that need recovery? Shakata kata kata. Shakata kata kata. Proskete kata. Everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere. Inside, outside, outside. The grace for recovery. The grace for recovery. I release that grace now over individuals and over families over individuals and over families individuals who have lost things lost things lost opportunities lost opportunities somebody is recovering an opportunity somebody is recovering something that left you hallelujah the angel of the Lord is leading me here there are at least four people this grace for recovery must come upon you I'm seeing at least four people something you have lost is about to look for you something you have lost must look for you I force it to look for you by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah listen let me tell you I told you God answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction. That collision with the anointing is what will program your testimony. And all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a strong man in four families that God is clearing out of the way. Listen. Listen. I don't say things like this lightly but I'm seeing at least I'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people they don't even know they are the ones where are they inside and outside whoever in the name of Jesus by the fire of the Holy Ghost any man sitting on anybody's destiny here you want to rise but they stop you you want to move but they sit on your glory i clear them out of the way now listen you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service like this mama you see that the devil wants to kill this woman with cancer eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her your mother you are the ones who brought her hold the mother and two of you come you two of you need deliverance first leave mama come come and stand someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit i've prayed for her but i'm looking i'm this is this is your mother two of you i want to pray for you eh what you need i know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer but for you god must heal you first you will need deliverance eh? i'm not saying you are witches but i have to pray for you this is the instruction god is giving me father in the name of jesus you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement therefore i lay my hands on you in the name of jesus fire over every wicked devil in the name of jesus you came to stand in for your mother but satan has his own plan for you in the name of jesus Kai. wickedness is real i held these ladies and the lord showed me a vision i'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and I'm seeing something that looks like a pot. They are writing names of people with blood. Blood, not chalk. They will write it and throw it inside the pot. Write it and throw it. This is an Igbo family. Write it, throw it inside the pot. Lord, I don't know why you showed me this vision. 
but in the name of Jesus I don't care where the family is but in the name of first my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first in the name of Jesus Christ if you don't like the prayer point say amen to the one you believe but my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist this is someone's destiny these people are here oh, I'm praying you may not even know you are the one I say it again whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name whether it's your marital destiny whether it's your breakthrough in the name of Jesus let the earth open and swallow that wicked man who say now who say now who say now who is that please let her come please quickly you are who say now what's your name huh? who say now I want to pray for you eh? I'll pray for two of you but you are the one I want to pray for what's your name from where what state are you from FCT. you are from FCT do you believe in favor shout it no you are not shouting you have shout favor in the name of Jesus Christ I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what God is bringing for you favor who say now I want to pray for you you are who say now to madam please come you too is it more than daughter or you are coming by yourself you are, you are who say now to I'll pray for you but this is the lady I want to speak to you love Jesus with all your heart I want to pray for you God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family major breakthrough I lay my hands right now and I command let it happen right now in the name of Jesus where are you from my dear Jalingo, Taraba, in the name of Jesus, the Lord gives you a miracle. Now, in the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Every bad luck must live your life now. Eh? Every bad luck must live your life. I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go. This lady, only bad things look for her. <laughs> there are people like that. When good things come, they just turn. There is a spirit that turns it away everybody is getting a job something that is simple when is your turn let me tell you something hardship is not poverty hardship is a spirit you get things but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years is hardship is a cause are you hearing what i'm saying now you can't go give god glory under that kind of condition simple things you ask somebody out i want to marry you they answer you after four years it's a cause are you are you a demon it's a cause you start a building project you finish after 10 years it's not a blessing a hard life is worse than poverty this is what the devil has put on the life of this lady I, I take it away now in the name of Jesus and I use as a point of contact if there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening in the name of Jesus I command whatever it is let the fire of God come upon it now let me pray for you man in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon you and I release favor in the name of Jesus favor I'm seeing someone you are into printing please let's hurry up we have to stop a few minutes now so that you are into printing you print like um, posters whatever it is you design you print banners please who is that person I want to pray for you you are into printing uh, I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing I'm not saying if you want to do it if you are currently doing it you are into it for how long? Since my, my child was a, I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. 
Mina. Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here. I'm serving in, in Kadzara. Because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds, I don't know, well, may not be so much money to you, but I'm seeing something, losses of at least, this is a very big project that the person is even angry. I'm seeing something that even has to do with police. Because the person will say that he went and gave the job. All of you are into printing. What are you printing? I'm into printing. What printing? Books, everything, in every press. Books. You yes. too? Your dad? All of you, I'll pray for you. You are standing for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. We want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when, I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen, something happens and destroys your life. I have to pray for you. Where is your dad? Huh? He stays in Abuja. He stays in Abuja. That's where you stay too? Yes. What's your name? Peace. Peace. I want to pray so that we'll stop trouble eh? in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray. Every trouble we avert now. You two, you are into the printing. Where? Abu Press. Abu Press. Yes. You work with Abu Press? Yes. You walk there now, it's not your own. Okay, but I will still pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace. The one for Mina, I release you. Eh? Can I pray for businesses? Yes, sir. Can I speak over businesses? Huh? You are into printing? Uh, what's your name? Hassan. Hassan. You, you, you need to. Um, well, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family, but you look smart. You don't dress, you see, no shoes, your hair is scattered, not combed. You look smart. Eh? You are my friend. I want you, it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this. It will be difficult for you to get a good wife like this. It will be difficult for you to get many good things. <laughs> Appearance is the seed for acceptance. Don't say it doesn't matter. Dress well. The house. Organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we are going to pray it. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are into printing too. In the name of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. There is somebody you sew clothes. You are a serious tailor, but for a long time, this is from April. Everything just went down. I don't mean gradually 
down like this it's almost as if please who is that person you are a tailor you sew clothes you are a serious tailor but something just happened i'm seeing the month of april and everything just went down you are the one you sew clothes where Yango. who knows you if you are a serious tailor they should know you here who are who, you've sewn people's clothes here Okay, Zango. Yes, there's a shop. I'm what? Ha then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month. Yeah. Um, Close. Okay, I'll pray for you. If you did something wrong and they pursued you, when you come here you ask for mercy. You don't complain. Even if it's my shop and you don't do well, I will drive you. Everybody wants to succeed. So let's, let's be very honest when we are before God. Praise God. When you are before God, if you tell the truth, that's even what will provoke his mercy. You understand? If, you, if, if I employ you, don't be embarrassed, my dear, but if I employ you and you are not bringing me anything and I'm paying you, why won't I downsize and drive you? So don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you. I'm not seeing the person as a wicked person. No. Something happened and it's your fault. Eh? You need the mercy of God. And God will help you. Don't make it. You see that if, if it's not revelation now, you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked. My prayer for you is that God will bless you too. Huh? But please, don't be angry. I'm not seeing that person. That person did exactly what I would have done. Father, in the name of Jesus, show your daughter mercy. If you need mastery, may God improve your skill. May God improve your value. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. God will not leave you hungry. The God we serve will change your story tonight. In the name of Jesus. You experience his mercy, you experience his grace. Madam, you are a tailor. Where? Samaru Market. Samaru. Market. You have your shop? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You are a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sold their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family it may just need you are a very good tailor i'm not i'm not against you don't feel bad i'll say there's some people that's what i'm seeing now yes, and there's problem now they're even angry yes sir because they are supposed to sew something for them for an occasion uh, and you didn't finish and now the person is really angry so these are some of the things we are talking about as god steps in let's allow his mercy just tell them sorry because you i want you would have been far more than you are now but there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory Hold my hands. He must go now. To draw from you again. Again. Let me say it. And I will keep saying it again and again. God denied me the privilege of doing so many things. And it was very, very painful. All that I had to do was spend time with him and build. No preaching, no nothing. And at that time, there are a number of people here who were in Zaria. At that time, you know, now there's a lot of the teaching has stabilized a lot of things. But those who were there in Zaria at that time, oh boy. You could see a man of God who can be, you know, all kinds of paraphernalia. Three or four people holding the briefcase and the man is just moving up and down, well suited in a hot sun with nothing. No message, no encounters. And I felt really sad for some of these people. I remember once and again trying to reach out to them and say something may be wrong and you will regret it eventually. But they wouldn't listen. The greatest way to hurry in life is to stay with God. If you ever call staying with God a delay, you are joking. If I sit in Dangote's office from morning till night, I may not say I wasted my day. Because humanly speaking, in one moment and with one check, he probably can create a lot of possibilities around my life. We have indoctrinated ourselves, listen, into thinking that time spent with God is a waste. He's shortchanging your time for shining. 
we think the only way to shine is when you stand before men no i've learned the power of the secret place no matter what happens in your life if you stay in the secret place then you continue to move forward are we together everybody say encounter if you're in ministry here please listen carefully i don't care whether you've been in it 10 years two years your secret life must be greater than your public life to excel i continue this is very hard for me now even as i'm speaking because of my schedules and all of that it's very difficult it is luxury for me to really find quality time i tell you sincerely you must know god you must have a serious encounter with god encounters produce convictions convictions i have a lot of regard for people who are sincerely wrong because even in their error they have conviction I don't have a lot of regard for people who vacillate convictions at any show of hope. It's better for me to be sincerely wrong and stand there. It is easy to be adjusted. That's why Jesus had a problem with the scribes and the Pharisees. All of the people who were there, the madman knew he had demons. He just sat down there and it was easy for him to be free. Are we together now? An encounter creates convictions so that you don't believe this today believe this tomorrow return back to what you believe next week you are not going to be an effective minister that way because i'll be teaching you shortly you have to build people sequentially along a thought line i think this is one big mistake that pastors make i don't want to go ahead of myself we think that ministry exploits is in the scarceness of the truths we share that means every Sunday there must be one mystery or one thing I would dish out. And once people are saying, oh, boy, my God, can you imagine this dimension? You will find out after two, three years that it's like hopping to every faculty for lectures and expecting to be awarded degree. My question is in what? You didn't stay long enough in a department to be awarded that degree. Nobody is giving a degree nothing. convictions many preachers do not have convictions we teach and then you return back and doubt you too you were not very sure of what you taught you just return and say ah, i hope i did the right thing i just hope that the truths that i share are really truths and after 10 20 years you'll find out that a lot of preachers will now say this ministry thing i'm done with it i was going to minister in house on the rock pastor fred and I, a gentleman came and met me and said apostle my father was once a pastor i said so what happened he said right now the man recites quran He's, he has become um what they call these these teachers yes i said what happened i will not mention the denomination just to honor them i said what happened he said he was a preacher nothing was working and they kept giving them you know the, they have the manual that you used to preach and when the guy finished the preaching he would go back and say what is this why am i deceiving myself it's not working my family is dying my life is dying i'm sick i'm tired many preachers are like that there are central topics shared around there are conventions you must hold when the time comes there are reports you must give doesn't matter whether god moved or not and so that ritual over a long time erodes god out of the process administration is important but without god is hellfire i believe in encounters i truly believe in convictions anything i'm not convicted about you will never hear me teach it there are things and areas you may never hear me teach on i may touch it here and there but my conviction has not grown beyond a threshold level to communicate it and i don't want to feel guilty for communicating that area 
Are we together now? We need convictions. Still on encounters, you see, let me teach us something very powerful by the privilege of God's grace. The pattern for your ministry comes out of your experience with God. Listen very carefully. God is a God of patterns. And in as much as there are universal laws and principles, we must be very careful. I believe the suggestion to put the ark on a cart was because they saw it somewhere. I don't believe they just said, oh, let's decide to put it on a cart. They probably saw them carrying another deity through the ark. And they said, this is a cheaper method. I mean, why burden men when donkeys can do the work? And in doing that, there was a serious trouble. In many pastors' conferences, and respectfully so, we have to be very careful blueprints that were not part of the design moses received the blueprint on the he was not the architect but he received the blueprint the dimensions were given it's not enough to build the tabernacle you must build according to pattern if it will host the glory of god you need a pattern it's good to receive mentorship it's good to emulate but you must sit down lord how is this going to happen there are times you will say for your ministry you will only stand still and the egyptians you see today you will not see forever other times you will say go around jericho seven times it is not every time you stand near the water you have to part it there are times you will need you to walk on it so don't assume that because the water parted yesterday you will part it tomorrow your pattern comes out of your experience out of your experience if you don't have an experience with god you will not have a pattern for ministry whatever trends is what you will hop into is god blessing us this morning an encounter with god creates convictions an encounter with god creates patterns the edge of any effective ministry among other things is the pattern we win generally in life not necessarily by the dexterity of the army but the flawlessness of the strategy it is also true spiritually i know a man of god who i think he once listened to my teaching where i was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there and the guy got up with zeal without knowledge and went to tell his people he said no you know if apostle can do it i can do it and then they refused they they said no visitors sleep again no um uh, what they call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking cancelled they have what they call a follow-up department cancelled everything say god cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly It wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said please you will need to help my pastor i think something is wrong let it not be that is your message that is confusing this man and i said no you see there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing there are blueprints that god gives you on account this is one of the benefits of the secret place there are things that god will give you customized to your work with god it is an error if you build a doctrine out of it most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that god gave men because of my work with god listen carefully it's possible that to create efficiency god can tell me you my son do not have more than three children this is my dealings for you i have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i will now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child 
tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that god will teach you the difference there are things god has told me you will never 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 hear me tell anybody it's between me and god it's like a code of operation come pastor it's like a spiritual system of operation so the for william branham listen for william branham there was a way that the angel of the lord will come in a meeting are we together now william branham will wait to for a long time praise and worship the worship team is singing and the guy will just wait what are you waiting for he says waiting for the angel it was a pattern and as soon as the angel came that's it his eyes if that angel did not come sir this man it will be like a charm he can't see now by the time we create a ministry out of that and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of william branham's angel are you seeing that now before you know it a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light this is how many people got into error subconsciously so an angel will come and tap you and say i'm here now this guy's name is femi you say what's your name femi you say this thing is working i mean i can't, I can't believe this you didn't go into error knowingly not understanding the difference between a doctrine you don't change doctrines they are they are principles defined by god's integrity but because of the unique nature of man as an entity god will have to create a system a curriculum unique to you that's why every man must know god for himself i know men of god who don't worship this is a distraction to them you are playing that and clashing symbols they say two of you go out of my meeting please don't distract me and you are wondering how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick you keep watching you just keep watching the moment is time he will tell you it's time and from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless benny Hinn, up until today huh benny Hinn, you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in benny Hinn's meeting like that he will send you away he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seeing the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrine so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now papa Ia deboe kneels down when he's about to preach it's not in the bible Paul bows his knees to pray for the people. But because of his work with God and a system he created by the wisdom of the Spirit to acknowledge God. It is alright if you have the revelation for it. But there are many people as they are kneeling down, you know that this person is just doing nonsense. Sometimes they don't even pray. They just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual everybody say patterns you must know God for yourself I can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place but what anointing and it will not always be by visions these are things that cannot exactly be taught they were products of the secret place I was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings 
I can know what anointing is in a place. It's not everything you say that you see. I remember the first time I started seeing angels. Please listen. I didn't see angelic beings. I started seeing like, you know how a ribbon is. You know how, you know how children play with ribbons. This is what I was seeing. I didn't even understand what I was seeing. Until I stayed in the secret place. And then I remembered that angels move in the similitude of light. And then God started helping me. Even before I started seeing angels read. But today there's a lot of lies people say i'm seeing an angel standing they are even saying jesus is standing here jesus you go and read your bible and see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory nobody saw jesus in his glory and just stood like that laughing oh. let me tell you if an angel appears here or any spirit being if one eye can see it that doorway that interface that has been created must create a reaction the rest may not see, but they will know something has happened. Look at Paul, Saul of Tarsus. The moment Jesus appeared, he was the only one seeing him. The rest just found out they were falling. What in the world is going on here? Because that pattern is not there. We have to invent lies. Lie word of knowledge. Lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know god for yourself that when you stand and tell people god will bless you you know the god you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen the god of abraham isaac jacob must become your god there is a name that your experience must give God. That name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry. You hear Kenneth Copeland when he's ministering, he can just turn and say, yes, sir, I'm hearing you, sir. As if he's talking to his friend. It's his way of knowing God and that encounter that he's had with God. Are we learning something this morning? This is very important. So we need a revelation of an encounter with who God is. Ministry can be extremely distracting. It is your knowledge of God that keeps you in focus. Do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art? The same way you become a tailor. The same way you become a, a chef, you can become a minister, a preacher, a dispenser of teachings. And there is no life, there is no power. Unfortunately, members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak. At first, it will start like a dissatisfaction. The wedding in Cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place is not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me i don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying no i think this is nice um first corinthians this i think they would like to hear this wow this is wonderful brilliant amazing i mean this and that and that i've been preaching for a while and let me tell you sincerely it is possible for me to sit down and not open my bible and not study and except god reveals to you by word of knowledge you will not know like i said it's an art when you have been opening a book a long time you are not too dull some scripture would have been in your head just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed encounters encounters you must make room for god in your life if you want to be effective as a man of god listen to me we have a space pastor for our cars even if you have 10 cars you put a garage for them we have a storehouse where we keep food 
we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with god listen ministry is not teaching necessarily not preaching necessarily not just healing the sick necessarily but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing god and your understanding his ways this is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of god there are men of god who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry is a man's knowing god so i know you are preparing for ministry not just because you are buying banners and suits not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair i know you are preparing for ministry to the degree to which your hunger and your passion for god is growing i look at your secret place and i know the efficiency that will come from ministry let me tell you why this is powerful our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity if they give a chance to hear god from you and you mess up it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage there are too many alternatives today gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice right now the moment you don't dispense truth there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with god his presence the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him his power that comes from a relationship you know i i shared with you um, my story you may have heard me say it one time where i used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago um i have this neighbor here and there he's also involved in um uh, what do i call it now it may not be fair to call him a herbalist would i say he's a herbalist but he does well you you know what i'm talking about isn't it yes and he believes he helps people with it you know and he has helped people he told me his whole track record that he goes to lagos and does all of that and so when i came to stay there things started really going bad for him because nobody was coming there again and then one night this is true he just came and just knocked on my door and i came out and in a very personal way he said look you know the way his life is going now kai this thing is not really working and he was talking to me whether there was a a possibility for collaboration and there was a way i could like lend him whatever i was using it's true it's very true and so i laughed i told him i said sir i understand he said his own is a gift they inherited it from their own father so it's not some he's not a bad man let me he's one of the nicest men i know till date he's a wonderful man so i'm not talking of um, um an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and i told him i said in this life in this faith walk the power you get is not something that is in your hand independent of god it comes from a relationship it's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband are you getting what i'm saying now you can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name i came because i'm in trouble he says do you have the goat the black goat is here what else here and gives you the charm and you leave but that's not the way it is with god when you come and say god give me your hand he said take my heart first it starts with my heart you find my hand in my heart 
very important whatever has the possibility of destroying listen destroying your love your hunger your passion for more of god you have to trust god for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life are you getting what i'm saying it's powerful The most destructive things that can kill a man of God are not evil things. They are good things. Evil things you can easily detect and run back. Pride, lust, you can run back to the secret place. But money, accolades. You will read the scripture and say, this is what should happen to a man when you are serious. So you will believe God is working and you will not grow. Satan will always use something good to destroy you. He will seldom use something evil. It will be too noticeable. Everybody say encounters. Very powerful. God bless you, Pastor. From your encounter will also come your message. The message or your mandate. Please write it down. To make sustainable impact in a territory in a generation you must have what we call the message not a message you can have messages you can have sermons but what is the message every great man i know no matter how vast in spiritual truths has a central theme that represents the communication of what god has granted him access to see to know and to communicate to a generation are we together now pastor fred was saying something very instructive when he came here it truly is important you see the best of any minister is only an effective minister there is no how you can see all of god from one standpoint so he distributed his dimensions across the body and no matter how effective you are no matter how vast you are in knowledge you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand god in a dimension when you mention joshua selman you don't think relationship and marriage and this. no doesn't mean i don't know anything about it but i'm not an expert it's a waste of time if you invite me there somebody will be shouting while i'm saying let us pray and that's not what you plan for people are sitting in a round table with jews and not have you ever seen anyone invite me for a valentine talk no does that mean i don't know what to say about relationship and marriage you will be joking when you are sick and you are lost benihin comes when you are weak and there's no faith working in you kenneth copeland comes are we together now when there are all sorts of oppressions in your life dr dk or lukoya comes when your life is scattered and you need mercy fast papa kumui will come with one message how many one one message you will hear you won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down listen nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively Are you getting what I'm saying now? Impact cannot be haphazard. You must brand it with the unique dimension of God committed to you. I should be able to. Did you look at all the men of God that came here right from yesterday? You can almost speak the unique grace, the unique operation. Everybody said the message. The message represents why you exist as a ministry. You must have the message. What did God send you to do? He sent me to preach the gospel. No, that's not your message. That's the great commission. It wasn't given to you. It was given to all of us. Or a robot said every time he would say this, my assignment is to take the healing power of Jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like benny Hinn and then take testimonies he will lay hands one by one that's why he succeeded he was one time the greatest 
healing evangelists in the United States. T.L. Osborne was granted that grace to communicate the message. His entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving, the healing, and the delivering power of Jesus. When you listen to Samadayemi, even if Samadayemi holds a business, I mean a, a healing service, in that healing service, he must mention value. That the power of God has come to give you value. Oh, his, his lingua franca will betray him. It will rebrand him back. You are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body. So you must have a message. It must be clear. The Bible says, write the vision. Make it plain so that he will run that reads it. These are very simple truths, but you need to understand this. The message. A flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message. Hill song. Many of you know Hill song because of their music. They are not just singers. They have an exact message. And the message is to see Jesus glorified. As simple as that. All their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of Christ. That's all they sing about. Don Muen, listen to him very carefully. Don Muen, the entire scope of his music ministry is not just to reveal Jesus, but also to communicate hope and life. You listen to his songs. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. So that among the many artists we have, when you really need hope, you know who to go to. It's very important. The message. Number two. The second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure. Now please pay attention. We started well by talking about our knowledge of God, our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe is where i will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area especially the house on the rock truly speaking i honor them for this one thing because based on my background there was no there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence are we together now yes but as god began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership when it was time for people to eat bread jesus said let the people sit down in 50s why because if you have a crowd of five thousand people and everybody tries to collect that bread they will kill you and kill the messiah if they can and eat the bread if there is no order one person's appetite will eat one basket they sat down and wastage was minimized it's important you cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry no there has to be a system spiritual people have this problem anointed men and women of god are some of the most disorganized people as ministers why because of the excellency you know when you truly are anointed and you have a message people will forgive every other thing and just endure but it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way is somebody getting what i'm saying leadership to the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them it's just to strike the shepherd that's all 
when god wants to destroy i mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep he does something to the shepherd and that's it moses was weary leading about 2.5 million people he was tired he was fagged out and he went and was frustrated and jethro his father-in-law came to him and said mister you are going to weary yourself everything you are involved in you are a human being he said set captains over thousands over hundreds over fifties and he created that leadership structure let them be the ones to handle some of the issues in the early church there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables when the grecian women remember and the, the women began to fight in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can't begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now when Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until he came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as God began to bless the ministry the need came and now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community 
very very important there is something called due season for things and by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think it's a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by God. So it is good that people become and remain creative. But that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the, the order that was given to you. If you allow people, there are things they will do that will get to a point where God will ask you who sent you. In this ministry, for instance, I'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people, and they know I love them with all my heart, to be able to come up with their ways. I don't unnecessarily interrupt. There is a level of autonomy within the various departments, but never without supervision. You don't invent an idea and execute it like that. No. Everybody say leadership. This is very, very important number three the third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy Now, these things I'm teaching are very powerful. They are not my opinions necessarily. They are truths that I've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on God's standard and even by the standard of success. I've had the privilege by the grace of God to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent. Execution strategy. That means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it almost every worker if not every worker in this ministry knows the subdivisions of the ministry they are not a secret both the ones for the future and now it is very clear there is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry. These are the platforms through which the purposes of God as committed to us will be executed. Everybody say execution strategy. You need it in business. You need it in, in, in your organization, not just church. Under execution strategy, again, is your culture and ethics. Your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy. 
how do you behave what is the modus operandi of the ministry in as much as we frown at tradition in as much as we frown at religion no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it if something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he's taught say, everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song 
and say, I just had a song this morning and I really like it. You will learn it now. Say this and that. And that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by God to the ministry. Are we together? Ethics. How do you behave when wealthy people come into that church? How do you behave when politicians come? What is the system of receiving them? What is the system of welcoming them? You don't wait till they come, then you start thinking, what do we do with this guy now? No. If, if the governor of this state, or if someone now is going to come, what is the system? If you don't learn this, God cannot bring influential people under your care. If someone comes to testify up here and says, God bless me, I have a job. I mean, I have created jobs right now. I have the power. In fact, I'm thinking about it. Between now and next month, I'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs. What do you think will happen to those who are not employed? They will wait for him after service. They've already come with their CV for prayer. So straight, they will just go outside and will lay that person. And others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zig my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed. Yesterday, after the meeting, the protocol came and met me. They packed all kinds of, um, some. I think it was a gift or so. They brought for him and the wife. And then they gave him and said, Kai, you blessed me. Take, sir. He refused to collect it. He said, give the protocol. I am here to learn. I am here to grow. And when the protocol met me, I looked, I said, oh, what a wise man. I said, whatever we can add to this and bless it, let us give him and honor him. You see that? A man of God that is in discipline can come to another man's house. Listen very carefully. I went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car. I said, no, 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 I'm not collecting this car. Go and give the car to your pastor and bless him. When he went to the pastor and said, sir, God spoke to me to give apostle this. The pastor called me and said, apostle, this gentleman is serious. He wants to bless you with the car. I said, well, whatever it is, are you in agreement with this, sir? Culture. Anytime I go to a ministry and I want to do anything that I believe or I know is not the usual practice, I will usually seek for permission from the man of God or if I can come stand with him. These are things that you have to learn. It's not all about anointing, anointing, anointing. There are systems. The first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons, the structure. Are we together? Just like Pastor Fred shared. When you enter a man's house, listen, no matter how great you are, if you are in someone else's house, you have to work with their system. If they remove their shoes outside, take off your shoes. I remember the time I went to minister in Cherubim and Seraphim. I was invited to minister there. And they were all happy that I was coming and I blessed God for it. As soon as I got there, you know, our dear people there said, No, 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 Apostle, enter with your shoes. I said, Why? Why should I enter with my shoes? I took off my shoes. Because that is the protocol. I learned this from Dr. Modok. Protocol is important. Adaptation is proof of honor. When you come to a ministry, don't come at your terms. Have the flexibility to bend to the practice. I never come to a church and then I'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor. I just get up, I hold the mic, I say, God wants to move. Choir just, and mm -mm. you sit down and wait for your time. If they call you to take offering, don't give word of knowledge. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for this and that and that. When you finish, God bless you. That's it. Pray for children. Don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy. Pray for children and leave that place. 
as the lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms i'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities please don't be tired of what i'm teaching you we're soon going to pray if you truly want to be effective if you came here this morning it's not just for prayer and impartation is to know the ways of god and to excel these are the inner working systems that make for efficiency priorities that means your focus and your emphasis for the now it's not everything god gave you that you can do now there are things god will tell you that is for 10 years koinonia is going to have a tv ministry we're going to have schools we're going to have all kinds of things but for now for now this is the assignment allocated for now and so we restrict ourselves listen the resources that god will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now there are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus a ministry just starts and in one year you may be holding five conferences you may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise the entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million and now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of god from the u.s and the two will come with their keyboards they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that and the pa he can decide and call you and say my son has been crying that he needs to see nigeria you know what that means once a baby can walk he's a passenger full payments like the adults now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church the program will be powerful but in the end of it is always on deficit always on deficit you cannot build and you cannot grow that way some guys one day i think it was last year very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land and they sent a text they said apostle we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have I think, just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is is there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of god i know my boundaries spiritually financially sociologically i will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things faith is not foolishness you must know your boundary and respectfully stay there i will not get up right now and then go to portacourt or go anywhere and say i'm doing a city-wide crusade or go to the u.s and say everybody come and fill this stadium
it's called vain glory you must get to a point where you know that god has tried for me but i'm still growing are we together there are many times during our leaders meeting you know we can share a few things that we want to execute and many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue once i shelve an issue they know that's it leave it there it's very very important priorities what do we do now god these are all the things you have said we'll do but which do we start with first what do we do now so number one is an encounter that births your message your convictions your patterns number two strong leadership that makes your impact systemic three an execution strategy that defines your activities defines your culture and ethics defines your priorities number the fourth one is your system of reach i call it your marketing a system of marketing and reach now please listen because many of us men of god are trusting god for increased membership we are trusting god to honor us with more and more people there is a strategy growth does not just happen like that there are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen your marketing and reach what does that mean how do you let your world know you are there the people will not come when they do not know you are there the bible says and it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business the first way that you reach people now let me talk about ministry i'm focusing this on ministry i apologize for other you know um other areas of purpose the most effective way i know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who owned the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking work of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know 
that Jesus will be in this city and will be having a program. Notice the scribes never sat outside. They were always early for the meeting. They followed the ministry of Jesus, followed the details. They would hear that God did this today, tomorrow he did this, tomorrow he did that. This is where I will want to bring a little balance. There is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life. Please listen to me. The greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have. You are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation. Change the people. The greatest testimony that, that really blesses me in ministry is not that the sick were healed. Sincerely, thank God for that. It's not that this and that happened. People receive this. But when people say, my life changed, I listened to the message. Something happened. I got to know the Holy Spirit. I became a leader. That's transformation. This is why you see ministries like that of Joyce Mayer, Joel Austin. You may not see them do physical miracles. And so because of that, you may think that they are not doing anything. Until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people. Some of them have TV stations in prisons. Some of them design the programs that the prisons use. And so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice. This is influence. I've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily. Number one is evangelism. Number two is influence. The second was the woman at the well. Jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles, many husbands, and then Jesus began to speak with her. When he was done speaking with her, he didn't even ask her, go and publicize. She ran and said, come see a man. This is how people come to our churches. Listen, they will not say, don't you know Apostle Joshua Selman? They say, come see a man. When the people come and encounter you and your God, then they will go back and say, now we believe not because you told us, we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now I'm in the light. I was poor. Now I'm blessed. This is the kingdom. Alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring, pay attention to your media ministry. Media ministry. Do not ignore it. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, a flying scroll. He was seeing the power of technology. A scroll that can fly. It's a scroll that contains information. But it's not limited to a localized environment. It can fly to regions. The media ministry is powerful. Look what the social media is doing. That someone can actually sit down from one spot. It's a system 
that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores god through you will pay for it whoever ignored jesus paid for it whoever ignored elijah paid for it whoever ignored moses paid for it the media ministry is powerful brand your content to reflect your values brand your content to reflect your values very important media is powerful there are many nations that i have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what god is doing here it is the power of the internet it is the power of the media it's very important a disclaimer though you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media because you see let me teach you something dear men of god an average man of god is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle nobody may have the right whether they agree with you or not they may not have the courage to confront you and say i don't like you welcome to the world where the, there are audacious men and women you can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said and someone will be saying that's my man of god he said that may be your man of god but that's my foolish man who i'm correcting if you don't have the emotional stamina listen to me because many christians are strong spiritually but we are weak emotionally they said this about me and it destabilizes you then do not be global it's a risk you are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of god if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement to stand persecution do not fear being controversial provided you have convictions they talk about jesus and they talk about satan no matter how far you go it will be in between two of them your jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching this madman i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice i'm giving you when i started out in ministry let me tell you something and an Jimmy is here he will testify i'm not somebody that i i'm a i'm a man of peace i honestly don't like trouble so if it means me lying down here for peace to reign i don't like controversy and i don't like trouble and that time i used to wear myself out i would pray and just spend time with god at about one or two when i now want to go and rest someone will now call me and say apostle then there was a place i used to meet in in the campus there are you at so 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 place i said no, i want to go and sleep and then they now blackmail me and say didn't you say god sent you for us I, i'm having pains i want to see you and you are complaining and i feel bad i just go back and say lord this is for your glory <laughs> let me tell you something about men you will never satisfy their desires you do not have that ability the same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off if you do not sustain emotional intelligence you will break down nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself 
if if i produce this and you hold it and say but this is dirty you mean pastor Alpha, this is all you could do as brilliant as you are whereas while you are saying it this person is on his knees collecting it many of you here looking at me you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me are you joking have you not seen people insult papa Ia Deboe? have you not seen people insult kenneth hagin one time i stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of god and just captioned it that they are all going to hell i said ah these are the guys that have taught the whole body of christ so if they are all going to hell let's find out quickly so that we can because you can't dodge any of them i mean these guys just carried the body of christ and said the church is going to hell convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different ask the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this Say, is this what you call a man of God? This is what you call church? Shame on you. And you go back and say, God, they said shame on me. God will say, go and find out what they said about me. <laughs> Let, let's keep going. How many of you precious sisters, they see you walk around. Oh, this lady, no earrings. Oh, this lady, head tie all the time. And you feel bad. And you are standing. Because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was? No, 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 no. The way that lady is dancing with the brothers, their mind will not be focused on the cross. Now you go back to sing hymns and someone, will, you know. Listen. Be guided by the fear of the Lord, by conscience and by posterity. Nothing more. You live to please everybody, you have trouble. God made the work easy. Focus on him. He's the only one who will mark the script. Everybody is a student. The best student in a class will still be assessed. So don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you. Are we blessed? I just digressed a bit. We're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you on easy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you ask every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately is that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh 
the trouble and weigh this. You just say, Kai. <laughs> That's the price for glory, my dear people. Living in a world where everybody loves you, that world is a dream. That world is a big dream. Do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined? There are times that I go to minister and I thank God for the honor. Sometimes right from the airport, you know, sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle apostle koinonia so what i wish koinonia i mean you see the anger this guy i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions. They hype it. Apostle is coming. Your life. I'm telling you, just come. I can discern. I'm a spiritual man. As soon as I enter, people are jumping. Sometimes you can see through the crowd. What is this? What is this generation becoming? Just because a man entered? Jesus entered. You didn't clap. Now a man is. You know. And then I just laugh it over and I love them. When I come up to preach, usually sometimes they are standing, oh yeah, let's see what he's saying that is unusual. What has he said that Kenneth Higgins has not said? What has he said? Let's see. It. And many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at no, then later they do like they want to open the notebook. They open it a little. And then later on, they're like, ah, this, I mean, this is. <laughs> Pastor, when they persecute you, it's not unusual. It's not always because you are wrong. Sometimes it's because you are right. Your assignment is to help even your persecutors. So accommodate their ignorance while they change. That's what makes you a leader. The ability to see the more superior version of themselves. Hmm. I'm blessed by my own teaching here already. The last. The last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you Whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again. You see, come, David, down. When you start out in ministry, you don't really need finances. Usually, you meet at one corner, under a tree, somewhere. All you are concerned about is the power of God falls on you. You teach. You don't need a mic. You don't need anything. So your focus will be on Jesus, your growth, and all of that. But now you get to a point where leadership, where administration, and other things begin to come in. The financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life. It can strangle your word life. It can even strangle your values. Everybody say finance. One of the questions that I ask the Lord sincerely from the depth of my heart. I learned this from Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. He said when God called him to do ministry, he asked God three things. He said, Lord, please give me three things. Number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you will give me these three, I will go. When I heard it, I went back to God. I said, God, 
I don't know if I'm going to ask you. I've asked you before for your presence. And now, maybe let me ask first before I will find out later that I made a mistake. Please, talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me. How is it going to come and where will it come from? You see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere? You call people to sow seeds. The next thing, someone is insulting you. They, that is not the system of the world. And of course, I know that here and there, people have exaggerated these things. Because there are bills to pay. I don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry. It is not necessary. But just believe me when I tell you, you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry. And we're not even in our own place. It's true. The rentals, the transportation, the power, and all the things that have to be put in place. And yet you are supposed to be focused and loving. That's why some men of God come up the stage. You see the anger. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it it? What part of amen can't you? Can't, and you know that this, this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me and you are refusing The Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. <laughs> you are pastors. Imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting. The communion alone for tomorrow. If I tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service you will be surprised you will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary must we take communion can't we just speak prophecy instead prophecy is cheaper just be blessed i mean what is there with communion it will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station how much per month not hd that's the channels you switch that you say please let's move to another channel that's what they paid did you hear what i said those channels that you see a lot of haze is it black is it white this is what they paid didn't satan pay men to say jesus is not lord as soon as he resurrected they called some people and said okay come let me tip you Say Jesus is not Lord. We will settle the words on the top. And Satan is still using money today. If the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not empowered in these end times, my brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. This is not about an addiction to money. This is money just like the anointing, tools for kingdom advance. It is important. Some of our visitors, we just got news that because of, I think, the convocation or so. I didn't even know there was convocation happening on, on Saturday. And now they just passed a directive that, you know, all our people there, they should evacuate them from the, um, the, the hotels that belong, you know, that we lodge them there. Can you imagine that? Just like that. Get out. Out. We have visitors coming. You and your money, get out. Now, imagine if I come and whisper and say, Reverend Bandoma, Pastor Fred, please, we need 500,000 this night. Now, can you find a way? If I do it directly, it will pinch me. So, find a way. No. Money can help you have integrity. Oh. Let me tell you this. It's true. It's true. Financial resources are important. Provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance. They work wonders. We need heavy financial resources. The gospel is free. But the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. The vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy. Every church. Thank you. 
and that includes businesses please listen we're going to pray must have i've stated this before but number one must have a strategy for income generation now the bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church the bible allows for tithes allows for offerings and all kinds of givings and partnership the bible allows that provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness but because of the peculiarity of our world today if all you do is depend on tithes and offering you will only run church services you can't run projects i've i've been i've been to the churches of all my dear friends and i've seen the projects that they are doing and many of you may not know but with all humility and to the glory of god we acquired a property recently and um i may not tell you how much that is but i can only give you an idea 36 plots of land now listen it was paid cash without raising any even the leaders didn't even know so that when we come to church we can serve god in truth and in spirit and not just to come and say people we are going to have to do this i'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people don't trivialize it reverend uban doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps anybody that is a kingdom financier your first assignment after knowing god is to be extremely wealthy if you are not wealthy you are wicked and you have failed to supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven i insist and i make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry that everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people i don't endorse it but sometimes it's an expression of the pain they were mentored to trivialize finances and so they pursued the things of god sincerely so but now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel a jimmy during the business session for those of you who were here he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of god just on dressing just not luxury just on dressing can build many houses are we together because a man of god cannot dress shabby and dress scattered is the same you that will say what is this this is not jesus when i started with the lord there was a year that god opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry i remember when i switched and i said believers it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. Now, in addition to that curriculum, God has introduced finance. Whoa. Whoa. I had, I got the blow of my life. Apostle has backsliding. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Apostle, leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't hate anyone. Don't, don't. I'm like Joseph. Sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent. You see the ignorance in the people. And you know if I don't manifest, they will remain like this. They are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant. I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men. Or listen to me i'm showing you the future and i said lord show me your ways please let me not get to a point in ministry where i have to do what i shouldn't do because i'm looking for finance most members 
don't know that men of God have other things with their lives too. Who pays the school fees of that man of God's child? How do you run the church? By the privilege of God's grace. There are so many of our children here that we take care of. It's not something to blow a trumpet about. Not school fees. They are upkeep. There are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person. And that done effortlessly. I have seen and I tell you by the privilege of God's mercy. The advantage of financial resources. Maybe this is why some of you came for this conference. It may be a pastor conference but you have done well in these other areas. But you may have been the victim of this skirmish communication by the gates of hell. That financial resources are not necessary. Change your mind. Please change your mind. The earlier the better. So that you will not eat your children in the future. And so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet, he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed. Hallelujah. When God showed me this, I was grateful when I found the keys. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income. It means full-hearted commitment. Hear what I'm telling you. The 21st century church, you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry. Full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you. It means let your heart be committed full-time. Because if you ignore everything, and say me i'm not i'm not a businessman i don't do anything let me tell you hunger will always drive israel to egypt it was hunger that drove israel to egypt like he's driving many of you right now you love god until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be if you must be outstanding in ministry Please, make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And No, they are all spiritual. What is carnal about money? It takes the spirit for you to prosper. The same way you press for character, anointing, revelation, please add finance to the list. As the tools together, the body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. I've taught you, no prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took resources to bring the body. Who was the owner of the grave that Jesus entered? He came out from it and saved you, but whose grave? Who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled? Whose donkey did Jesus climb? If he was broke and he did not have a donkey, there would be no triumphant entry. He was born in a manger. Whose manger? I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre and post colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. 
it's wonderful to love God but if you do not have an efficient leadership you will not last there will not be a system of building the reason why this building is built because is because one block allowed another to stay on it if the block refuses and said that's not how I am you would not have a structure leadership number three strategy you have to execute systemically to build according to patterns number four is your reach from Jerusalem from Judea Samaria to the ends of the earth he would have just said to the ends of the earth but he broke them in levels the way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea it's not how you would do it in in Samaria for every one of these regions and levels there are strategies for your reach And finally, finance. You need finance. It is one of the greatest tools. Do you know that in Europe today, pastor, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim? Fine. One of our dear ladies, I remember many years ago, she got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story. The wealthy people stashed money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They touched the car with money and opened it. Please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love. Even a wizard will say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asks you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please pastors hear me. Gone are the days where. You tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say so pastor Alpha this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss. And now with all that God has done. This is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life. And they don't know what else to do. They say instead of wasting my life, at least let me serve in the vineyard. We must change that perception. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes finance to lift it up. We are mandated to lift it high. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangichi Kaisaya Nakimama Please 
please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter 4, please. We are going to pray. Sila Maharusia Katabranda Gadusia. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Next verse. Verse 2. And many nations, how many? Many nations shall come, say come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, let me tell you, every great move of God starts like a joke. The kingdom of God is likened to a living. It's a parable. A living looks small and harmless until it sees the, what they call it? The dough. You just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise. That's what is happening. Something you are receiving. We are making noise and people are, these are noise makers. They are just broke people consoling themselves. Uh -uh. The Lord himself is the captain of this army. God has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like Reverend Ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that Lord through you my generation will know that Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish the minister's conference were to run for days. I would have taught you a lot of things. One of them is the ministry of men. You are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men. And all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said they should try to see if they can get me the person, and they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Men. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. 
you may be Moses but your hands will be tired and you will need the hands that hold you financially spiritually giving you encouragement and love you can't imagine how blessed I am hearing that pastor left Gombe Gombe is very far Zamfara far Reverend Ubanduma was here with his family he's here again one of my friends called me and said he's coming and you know this is not a standard conference we didn't send any letter of invitation I spotted different ministers here and there father the mighty men that will hold my hands as I lift up your name I draw them in this season lift your voice and pray favor with men favor with men favor with men favor with men oh god shala barakato za predekatesh kalaba shana ras open the doors of favor with men Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruit. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruit, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one, this one fighting this one, this one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. Real results. Results of salvation. Results of transformation. Results of miracles, signs, wonders. Breakthroughs is someone praying. And evidence is the end of all argument. A genuine result is the end of all argument. You are in business, cry. Give me results in business. Give my organization results. Consistent results. Please pray. Give me results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, go and ask him, are you the messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something 
a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira, is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need that they say, don't disturb me again, and they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits and I'm not talking of small startups and transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone. But we are men of God. Listen. Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results. But multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument. Please pray. Beyond contention. Abarakato Shabra Negate Baladash and Dekepras Kadabaladosh Rigetegedegedegede Bashabarana Balakata Pros. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. He says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll just speak over your life now. We we'll allow the impartation for the miracle service. Our time is gone. We want to just release everyone.
to go and rest. Tonight we have a session and then we are breaking the fast tomorrow by one. And after that we return for the miracle service and an impartation. But I will pray over all that we are involved with. But then the impartation, I know that many of you have come to receive. Look, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If God does not give you, you cannot have it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to pray. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. It's one thing to desire to build. But the Bible says they prospered and they finished. While they were building, there was prophecy that was ensuring that the building prospers and that it finishes. It matters the voice and the voices that speak over your life and over your ministry. Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until a voice opened his heavens. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven. When he met with John, John said, mm -mm, I desire, I mean, this is what you have is what I desire. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. No man can open, as it were, in this regard, his own heavens. It will take a voice. God kept watching but never spoke from heaven. When he submitted to the prophetic ministry of John, his heavens were opened and a voice spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, pastors, a voice has to tell creation to hear you. Hear ye that church. Hear ye that business. Hear ye that radio program. Hear ye that TV program. Otherwise, you will go up the mountain, nobody will come. You will go up the valley, nobody will come. You will stand by the rivers of Gennesaret and nobody will come because a voice never said they hear you. Hear ye him. There are men and women of God here. You are anointed. God has blessed you. But your environment is not placing a demand on the grace. There seems to be a resistance. I have seen powerful men of God. Absolutely anointed. But there is no open doors. No influence. No access. No increase. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I submit before you and even before your people. I confess that there is nothing I have in myself outside of Christ. The privilege of the office, the mantle, and the grace you have given. This has come from you and it belongs to you. I declare over every ministry here, by the power of prophecy, be shifted to the next level of exploit. Be shifted to the next level of exploit. Be shifted to the next level of exploit. I declare in the name of Jesus, the two lift gates that are closed over your ministry, we speak right now, may they be opened in the name of Jesus. The men and the women that must show up in this season to both protect and to lift the hand of God upon your life. I call them by prophecy right now. I'm seeing a key in the spirit. A big key. This is what the Lord is showing me. 
Lord, whatever this access represents in the spirit, and for whoever this is for, I pray and I cry to you, let the keys of their individual territories be given unto them in the name of Jesus. There are men of God here that love God, but you are out of revelation. You have cast out. You don't even know what to study again. You have preached everything. Fresh illumination from the throne. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for your prayer life. Let fresh fire come upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adolam. They saw him in a cave, yet they were not afraid. They still said you will be king over us. Listen, it is terrible to have people come to you just looking for your glory alone. You must have people that whether in glory and in shame, they are there for you. I declare may God find such people and call to your life. There are pastors that have many members, but they do not have kings. They do not have men who have voices. Listen to me. It is in the multitude of men that a king's honor is. But in the multitude of kings, a king's dominion is also enforced. You don't just need men. You also need men that have voices. I pray for you. God will not only bring men. He will bring influences to your ministry. Whatever is taunting the growth of any church here, any ministry, you have done the best in gathering everything you know to do. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, may the gates of your church be open. May the gates of your fellowship be open. May the gates of your ministry be open. Hallelujah. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There are many pastors. Any good thing you do is misunderstood. You call for a healing meeting. They say you are using charms. You want to bless people. They say you are selfish. You sow into people. They say it's manipulation. You don't give. They say you are greedy. Let me tell you. Correct perception. Correct sight. Is something only God can do. He touched his eyes. And men were like trees. He touched it again. God needs to touch the eyes of people where your church is located so that they will see you for what you stand for. Because there are times, listen to me, that before you get to the king, Ahitophel reached there before you and he can give a counsel that is not of God. I declare every misrepresentation of your life, of your ministry, of your business, of your organization, let it be straightened out and corrected now. You have humbled yourself to honor me, to honor the grace that God has put upon my life. I cry to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the grace and the mantle of honor, let it follow you back to your church. Let it follow you back to your business. Let it follow you back to your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me speak over your finances. We have taught here in this house that there are three levels of wealth. There is transactional wealth. Wealth that comes by exchanging value for a reward. There is transformational wealth. Wealth that comes on account of the impact you create in people. But there is sovereign wealth. Wealth that comes by prophecy and by the finger of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every church here. And I pray for every project and every individual here. By the mystery of divine supplies. The raven that can come to feed Elijah at Brook Cherry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things. It says, 
The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. There are people in ministries that the devil will position intentionally to continue to misrepresent the ministry and to destroy what they represent. You are going to have to trust God for grace. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. One wrong voice can scatter what you have been doing for years. One wrong voice. The rumor about Jesus that he said he would destroy the temple and he would build it in three days. Some said he would build it in one day. All the two, they had it somewhere. Listen to me. There are people that come to churches and tear down everything God is doing. They, you never see them in one church. In three years, they've gone to ten churches. Then they start writing articles. I've been everywhere and I've been to every church. No man of God is sincere. No man of God is true. They may be well-meaning, but there are spirits that are responsible for those things. I pray in the name of Jesus that a spiritual garrison be created around your ministry that protects the hand of God upon your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. For any ministry trusting God for land, you are trusting God to shift to the next level. May the God of heaven, in a way you may not even understand, may he surprise you in Jesus' name. Finally, I pray for you. The encounters that can sustain a man. The encounters that can strengthen your conviction. That you will no longer talk based on hearsay or because a man you respect is talking or saying the same thing. May that level of encounter in the name of Jesus, may God grant it unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will celebrate extraordinary results from all of our platforms in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not 